What's up everybody? Paul Baker with another exciting episode of Legendary Muscle. I'm with Wayne and his 72 Cornet Wagon. Wayne, thanks for coming to the show. Thanks for having me. Now guys, this isn't your typical 72 Cornet Wagon. This thing can lay down some serious rubber. Now, I gotta ask you though, 72 Cornet, was it something you've always wanted or how did you come across the car? Well, I grew up, my dad always had station wagons mm -hmm. and they were always some kind of hot rod station wagon. I always did something to the engine. Yeah. I was looking for like a mid 60s B body, old square body Cornet or Fury or or even like an A body of value or something. And this thing just kind of fell into my lap and followed me home. I <laughs> couldn't resist it. Now, when did you get it? How long have you had the vehicle? Um, was it always like this in this condition or how was it? It was actually, I hate to say it, but it was a lot nicer shape when I got it. <laughs> um, I got it in Nevada. I lived in Nevada, a very dry climate, so it was oh, pretty yeah. rust free. The uh, original owner traded into the dealership that I worked at. Man, well, I mean, it's nice. So all the, the rust came later on. Yeah, as soon as I moved to Florida, man, it just went like crazy. Now, the motor under this thing, is it, I mean, have you had to switch it out? Is it the same motor when you got it? Uh, I ran the original motor for probably about 15 years, just daily driver. Yeah. And uh, a couple years ago, I switched to a big block, just kind of done a little things here and there. That's awesome. Guys, if you ever, when I look at this car, automatically I think somewhere sitting on some beach, it has the surfboards on top. That to me is, is what this car looks like. Matter of fact, I had a 72 Plymouth Satellite a long time ago, four door, and it looks so much similar to this. What are the differences between the satellite and something like this, this Cornet? Well, they use the same platform, same unibody, um, the fenders, grill, hood were different. Um, the Plymouth had like a flat fender compared to like the Dodge had the little called the beauty lip around the fender wells. Um, Plymouth is like a base model so it's a little cheaper but the platform, running gear, um, the doors, the interior is all pretty much the same. Oh that's a beautiful car. Now what about the inside? I see that you have different kind of interiors on the inside. Do you have to switch it out in the inside too as well as the engine or is it just a full kind of restoration for you? Uh, the inside is just kind of mix and match from uh, junkyard stuff and uh, Whatever I found at Swap Meets, the um, the dash came out of a 71 Charger RT with the high oh, wow. performance cluster. The um, same same with the uh, rear view mirrors; those came off a of Charger RT. The uh, front seats came out of a junkyard out of a Mazda. And <laughs> that's pretty cool. It's a rubber floor mat car; it didn't even have carpet when it was new. So oh, that's awesome. Pretty pretty base. Well, I know he's talking about this motor and uh, the way it, this bad boy sound when he pulled in, I have to take a closer look. So if you don't mind, maybe we can pop that hook and do a walk around. Yeah, I don't mind. All right, sounds good. We're gonna take a look. Oh my goodness. Look at that, he's got a six pack. You didn't tell me you had a six pack in this thing. Well, well nobody asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at this. Oh my gosh, what have you done? I mean, it's all chromed out. This thing looks great. Well. Oh shoot! I kind of like to leave the outside just looking the way it is and just oh put gosh. all the money into the engine. Whew. Oh goodness, I, I think this is the first time I've actually seen a six pack like this. Honest to goodness, that is nice. So you had to, like I said, you had to redo everything. I mean, you got the radiator, all that. What were you saying earlier about this radiator? Well, the radiator actually came out of, a, um, it was made for like a Chevy Monte Carlo. Yeah. A buddy of mine gave it to me. He had some stuff laying around the shop, brand new. And uh, I'm kind of on a budget, I'm a teacher, so every dollar counts. So I basically yeah. used it, made new mounts for it, and I made the upper and lower radiator hoses to oh, work goodness. with this GM radiator because it's on the opposite side. So I fabricated hoses to go from one end to the other to make it all work. See, that's so crazy, just make things work. I mean, what else in here have you just made fit or made to work? Like, what is this? Well, that's the overflow bottle. <laughs> I didn't want to just put a factory overflow plastic ugly plastic bottle in there so yeah. found a wine bottle with a cool cool design yeah, on it. It is cool man. That <laughs> this is actually an exhaust clamp. Yeah. And the green part is part of an old seat belt. Oh my gosh. So I wrapped it around so and cool. made it for all I had to do was drink all the wine out of it first so it yeah. worked out well. <laughs> well that was easy right? And then uh, yeah the six pack three two barrel carburetors it's a uh, 383 430 oh. over so it's got six extra cubic inches to it. Um, Running almost 12 to 1 compression, it's a little bit high, but man, it works. That is awesome, man. This is the whole motor. That, that's a lot of time sitting right here, isn't it? That's a lot of time, a lot of money sitting under this hood. And who would imagine that? They pull up on you and they don't even think anything. 
try to race you and you just blow the doors off. Well, that's why I leave it looking <laughs> the way it is. It's a sleeper for sure. All right, now, this might be a stupid question, um, but where's the battery? Well, the battery's actually in the back. In the back? <laughs> a lot Let's of times you go drag racing, you want to put the battery in the back for weight transfer. Wow. So... What are you doing there? Well, oh. this is a base model, so it didn't even have a power window in the back, so you have to crank it down. Huh. So now the tailgate, you can actually open it like a tailgate. Yeah. Like a truck. Or you can it open like a door. Holy smoke. So that's high tech that? for 72. Holy cow, that's awesome. So the battery, yeah. I want to keep it looking like, you know, family vacation wagon, grandma, grandma's luggage all over it. So huh. I hid the battery in an old suitcase in the back, bolted it to the floor. <laughs> That's awesome. Man, you know what? I remember stuff as a kid in the Ford F1, or LTD. That's what it was, the old station wagons. We had the same same thing and just watched people as they get behind us. Mm -hmm. Man, all that my, is awesome. All what my kids grew up in this thing, sat in the back seat with their feet up on the oh, back, yeah. waving at people. All right, so what other surprises do you got for me? Because obviously there's surprises around every well, corner. i uh, got a little bit of nitrous oxide in it. No. <laughs> You're running the nitrous. Oh my goodness. That's a big bottle. Now, do you think you really need all that nitrous? Well, of course you do. <laughs> That's bad. Ever hear the expression, is not enough horsepower? Yeah, yeah. Now, how often do you use that? Um, I haven't used it in this wagon yet. Okay. I had this engine in my, my 67 Charger. It was my drag car. So I just brought the system over from it. That is so. crazy. So is it instant? I mean, listen, I've never been in a car that had nitrous is this just like a, like the tv show you push a button yes and no it's not quite like on fast and furious where you know the cars fly yeah but uh it's it's a good boost man that is so cool um also it's got a four speed manual transmission in it as well oh boy man this is it's beautiful i love the way it sits the way it looks i don't think i would ever change anything do you plan on doing any more upgrades to it or i mean i'll leave it just like this i don't know what's your thoughts what do you what are you planning on doing you know, eventually I'm probably going to finish the bodywork, or actually start it for that matter. Um, yeah. The front fenders, I'm going to repatch them because they're just, they got holes in them. Um, but right now I'm just enjoying it and having fun. I'm not too concerned about making it pretty. Yeah, no, that's um, awesome. It's just a fun car to drive, and that's why I built it. So talking about driving this bad boy, there's only one thing left to ask you, and that's if you watch my shows and you do, I would like to take a ride in it. We can do that. All right, we're going to close this bad boy down and hit the road. All right, guys, so we decided to take a detour as we were taking our cruise. Uh, we drove by the Hooters Car Show, and of course we had to stop. But we're going to do a little bit of questions about your car, and then we're going to go out and we're going to check this bad boy out. Now, what I was going to talk to you about was the gasoline on this bad boy. Mm -hmm. What are you using on gas? And is it really those tanks that you got above you? Well, it really is. Those are pretty much empty because a tank of Sunoco 110 is worth a small fortune, but... Yeah, if I don't run the Sunoco 110, 112, this thing just pings. It just doesn't like life at all. So i got to run some healthy fuel in this thing. Man. Now, when the gas prices shot up, did you see it in the, uh, of course, with the cans? Did they go up too, or was it pretty um, much staying the same? No, if you're buying the Sunoco ratio out of the pump, it's generally 10 bucks a gallon. Huh. And as much as our pump fuel went up, just, you know, regular gasoline, how much it fluctuated, it was always 10 bucks a gallon. So not, it really didn't affect you? No. I mean, not that <laughs> that's, that's cheap, good. but... Yeah. Ten bucks is still expensive. Yeah. I mean, you can't go anywhere far in the back. Not boy, really. That's for sure. Now, guys, looking at the motor, it's so clean and so perfect. He's got to be doing something. What What is the line of work that you're into? Why don't you tell them about what, what you do for a living? Well, I spent 35 years as a Ford technician, and then I got an offer from the school to teach automotive. Um, I ran with it. I love doing it. I teach automotive at uh, Marin Technical Institute. Nice. And... Um, 
We're, we teach high school students and adults, and I love it. I get to teach students my trade and start them on a good career. I think what's perfect about that is that he gets to teach them the right way. Um, make sure you go in, you're honest with everybody, and that's what's important about it. And that's what you're put, putting in their heads is yeah. you you got to be honest with they, each and every customer because they're recurring customers if you do that. Right. I mean, there's too many techs out there that are just going to try and get their paycheck off of one job. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be honest and get that customer's trust and you have them for life. That's the only way to do it. That's the way to go. Now, guys, before we get out and check out this cool car show, I have to show you something. Why don't you go ahead and hold that up here. Tell them a little bit about this model that well, looks just like the car. <laughs> I was out for shoulder surgery for a few weeks, so I couldn't play with the big car. So I made a scale model of this whole thing. Wow, the um, engine even looks like the engine that's in the car. And uh, <laughs> that's a, that's awesome. I rusted it in the whole work, so that is pretty neat. Well, I mean, hey, if you can't work on the big car, might as well work on the small one. Yeah. All exactly. right, guys, we are going to check out this car show. But if you liked what you've seen today, make sure you pound like and subscribe. Until next time, guys. Paul Baker signing out. See ya.